Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, and in this new year, as it's begun, we're all going to face different challenges. We're going to face different obstacles and trials that comes our way. It's up to you to make a decision to follow after Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Allow his spirit to empower you. Give you the strength to stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. Because we're going to be tested. We're going to be tried. It's up to you to make a decision that you're going to con be committed to following the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when temptation comes and things come to try your faith, the word says don't think it's strange when things come to test you. Because they only come to build you up in your faith. And I found out one thing, that when God allowed troubles to come into our lives, it will push you into your purpose. So it's up to you to make a decision to trust God or deny God. No matter what comes your way, you have to make a decision to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. It's very important as a child of God to every day study the Word of God. Put the Word in your spirit because the Word of God is your defense against the adversary who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So you have to make a decision that I will not be devoured by the enemy because the Word tells us to be sober, to be vigilant for our adversary, the devil, is that the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? It doesn't matter who you are, how strong you are in the Lord. We all get weak at one point. And we have to make a decision that I will not faint in adversities. But I'm going to stand fast on the word of truth. Because it's the word that has the power to set you free. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you all who just came on. Amen. I'm going to read a devotion tonight from More of You, God, the book More of You, God. And I pray that it blesses you as it does myself. It says, Lord, all I do is for you. Give me one second. Turn this music down. Amen. So, Lord, all I do is for you, Jesus. Lord, all I have is yours. Father, today I sacrifice unto you, Lord the Almighty King. I bow down at your throne, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. I give myself to you, Lord. Right now, I block out my surroundings, humbling myself before you. Father, reveal your supernatural power over my life. With you strengthening me, I can do all things through you, Father. You are my King, my Lord, and my Savior. And there is none above you. Glory to God in the highest. That's so beautiful. Holy is the Lamb. I just want to be near you, having more of you, God. You know, every day, that's where our heart posture needs to be, is surrendered as a sacrifice before the Lord. Allow him to make himself revealed to you and through you as a living sacrifice. That we can block out every attack the enemy try to bring against us because the word is our defense. And when I speak the word of God, I silence the voice of the enemy because we have three voices speaking to us. We have ourselves speaking to us, or the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us, and we have the voice of the enemy speaking to us. So which one you choose to allow to enter to your ear gate is what's going to dominate your direction. 
Not only that, it's going to set your life either on a pathway of righteousness and truth or a pathway of damnation and destruction. So we have to make a decisive decision that every day I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ no matter what comes my way. I'm going to clothe myself in the Lord Jesus Christ as a garment and take off the, the fleshly garment that's of the world. You have to make that choice yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to discipline you through the Word of God. Even when it comes to lying words that come out of your mouth, we, we become so destructive to ourselves and don't realize it. And God began to speak as I was lying down, just resting the day, just, just relaxing in the spirit. I'm hearing God speak that sometimes we destroy our own purpose by the negativities we allow other people to feed to us or the things we feed into ourselves through television, through radio, through other people, different avenues the enemy has as a tactic to bring destruction in your life. You feed into it. We have to regurgitate that stuff, to spit it out. Anything that's not of God, let it come out of you. Jesus says it's like this. It's not what goes into a man that defiles him or corrupts him. But what comes out of you, either going to be effective or destructive. It's your choice. Even when it comes to affliction. For the last few days, I'm having a lot of pain in my neck. Even when, mainly, mainly when I lie down. The pain seems more severe when I lie down. But I found out the key without taking medication is to meditate on the Word of God. And when I meditate on the Word and I lie down, my mind goes beyond the pain of the flesh and I tap into the Spirit and I allow the Spirit of God to cause a calmness to cause my nerves to rest. And I lie down in peace. It happens every time. It happens every time. So I have another devotion to read. It's from um, Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. Enjoy peace in his presence. I am with you and for you. When you decide on a course of action that is in line with my will, nothing in heaven or on earth can stop you. You may encounter many obstacles as you move towards your goal, but don't be discouraged. You hear that? You're going to have some obstacles. As you make a decision to consecrate, fasting and praying, moving forward in the will and the plan God has for your life, your destiny, don't be discouraged. Never give up. With my help, you can overcome any obstacle. It didn't say some obstacles. It didn't say sometimes. But he says with his help, which is God speaking, through Jesus Christ our Lord, you can overcome any obstacle. Do not expect an easy path as you journey hand in hand with me. You hear that? It's not going to be easy. When you make a choice to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, your pathway gets rough. Your pathway gets crooked. You become discombobulated and confused sometimes. But Jesus makes it known to us that hand in hand with me is not an easy journey. He proved it with the life he lived before us. He went through persecution. He went through ridicule. He went through suffering. But then he says, but do remember that I, your very present helper, am omnipotent. That word means all-powerful. God is right there in the midst of what you're going through with your infirmities, your troubles, your trials, the aches and pains, finances depreciating. 
It seems like things just keep going wrong in your life. It's like you try to get ahead. You, you get knocked back three steps. But God says, I am. Key word, the I am. Is omnipotent. And he's with you all the time. Much, much stress results from wanting to make things happen before their time have come. Much stress. It is the result of trying to make things happen before God ordained it to be in your life. So many times we try to get ahead of God to fix our own situations, create our own wealth without God, make our own decisions and goals and plans without God. And if God did not approve it, all it does is produces frustration. One of the main ways I assert my sovereignty is in the timing of events. God asserts his sovereignty. It becomes effective in your life in the timing of events because God lets events happen in our lives according to his time. He'll answer you according to his will. If you want to stay close to me, and do things my way. Ask me to show you the path forward movement by movement. Instead of dashing headlong towards your goal, let me set the pace. Moment by moment, let God set the pace. Slow down and enjoy the journey in my presence. Isn't that wonderful? You can enjoy God's presence in your journey. If you just take the time and be patient and wait on God and be of good courage, he'll strengthen your heart. He'll lead, he'll guide, he'll direct you. Have a repentful heart. If you make mistakes and mess up, don't allow condemnation to settle in your heart, but allow the Lord himself to redirect you and restruct you and cleanse you and perfect you and put you right back on the right track on the journey he has set before you to accomplish and you can enjoy his presence. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, this is going to be a good lesson tonight. Jezebel uses false prophets. Jezebel uses false prophets. So we're going to pick up where we left off last week about how Jezebel manipulates, control God's people through flattery. And enticing words. It's nothing wrong with people saying good things about you. But if it puff you up in pride and cause you to become selfish, then it's a sin. Because the enemy knows if I can distract you, deter you, stop you in your pathway, I can stop you from walking in your calling. You know, one thing I was pondering today as I was walking through the house, I even had to defrost my defrost freezer today. And as I was doing that, I got a revelation that a deep freezer, and I looked up reason why they frost many times. Because sometimes if the seal is not properly connected to the top of the deep freezer, or the door's not closed properly, moisture gets in. And it causes disruption in the freezing process. Even can stop your freezer from working. The Lord showed me something as I was cleaning out today and the water, uh, the, 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 the ice began to melt and become water in the bottom of the, of the of machine. That we allow the enemy to disrupt our seal. We are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. But we're not properly sealed in connection and relationship with God. The enemy comes along and slips in in a subtle way as a draft comes in and causes frost to build up which symbolizes the world to be built around you. And as the world begins to corrupt you, 
it begins to dry you up and freeze you from walking in your purpose. So you become stagnant in your walk. And when God gave me that revelation, I said, oh, that's, that's a good one because we do this all the time. We say we're serving God. We call ourselves ministers of God. We say we're prophets of God. We're, we're evangelists. We're apostles. We're pastors. We're bishops. We're missionaries. We say who we are supposed to be in Christ Jesus until we find ourselves getting lazy. You hear that? Lazy. Slothful. Which symbolizes the draft that comes to your deep freezer. Your heart is the process where God builds you. <clears throat> and the enemy knows that he can get a subtle way into your life any way you allow him to come in. He will cause your anointing to freeze. It becomes ineffective. Because he doesn't want you to operate in the kingdom power and kingdom authority. So if he can freeze your anointing, he can stop you from being a threat to his kingdom. Ain't that something? Think about that for a moment. Because if he can stop you from being effective, he can afflict you with all types of things the world has to offer for your demise. Sin is effective. And sin will cause you to dry up and kill you. The reason God says, therefore is now no temptation taking you but such as common to man. But God is what? He's faithful. Who will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you will be able to bear it. God knows what you can tolerate. He knows what you cannot tolerate. But he says it doesn't matter what temptation comes your way. I will not put nothing on you that you cannot handle. Temptation comes into your life from the desire of something that you've been through to, to affect you. And God says, I gave you the anointing. I gave you the power and the ability to overcome it. But if you don't know the word of God, then you don't know the power you have at your disposal. Isn't that something? Think of it. That's right. Distract you. He tries to distract you. Because he knows if I can distract you from seeing what God sees and says about you, you'll always find yourself wandering in the pathway of destruction. And one thing about God, God is not a man who should lie, nor son of man who need repent, but God is able to speak a word into your life and perform it. He'll cause his will, his plan, his purpose, his desire to manifest in your life. So let the haters talk about you. Let the backstabbers come. Let the persecutors persecute you. Because in the process, they're pushing you to where you need to be in God. We forget about this, so we let our emotions take over and anger fresh in our heart and start talking about folk and cussing them out because we forgot about who we are. You can find an account in James chapter 1, the latter part of that chapter. He said, we become like a man who beholds his face in a looking glass. As soon as we see who we are in the looking glass, we turn and walk away and forget what manner man he was. You forget about the call in your life. Forget about the purpose you've been created for. Forget about the will God has for you. Forget about the ministry God placed in your heart. For, forget about the servanthood that we should have towards God's people. So we find ourselves feuding a physical battle. What is a spiritual battle? Jezebel uses false prophets to entice you to turn away from the truth. Let's get into our lesson. I'm going to show you something here. This is going to be a good one tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
witchcraft is not only the tool Jezebel uses to manipulate and gain control, she also uses false prophecies. Isn't that something? She uses false prophecies. Her controlling manipulation especially targets spiritual authorities and strive on atmosphere of insecurity. We talked a little bit about this last week. An insecure person is not confident in who they are. They're not confident in the mate they have in their life. In a marriage, they're not confident with each other, to trust each other, to love each other. You always have a spirit on you of jealousy. And you feel like the person, every time they leave the house, they talk to you about on the phone, they got to be cheating on you. That's insecurity. Unfortunately, many prophecies in the church today are results of controlling and undermining Jezebel influence. Someone can come along in the church who has the spirit of Jezebel and prophesy. lie. And they say prophesy. Prophet lie. Because they speak something God did not instruct them to speak. To bait you and lure you from walking in obedience to God's word. Jeremiah puts it this way in chapter 17, I believe it is. He said, if the prophecies be spoken, say, and if it come to pass, just know it's of God. But if a prophecy be spoken and does not come to pass, let it be known that it's of us. Because any prophetic word that God have an individual speak over your life into you. He says, so shall my word be that go forth from my mouth will not return to me empty. But it will prosper where I sent it and do as I please. In other words, God says, I watch over my word to perform it. So if I send a prophet into your arena to speak a word to you, that prophetic word is going to manifest in your life. In the timing and the season God ordained for it to be in your life. I had prophecy spoken to me over 20 years ago. And I'm just not benefiting from them. Some prophecies took 10 years, some took 15 years, some took 20 years. And yet, I still trusted God that the word was from the Lord, and I watched that word manifest. I would not be assistant pastor today of a church if I had not believed the prophetic word spoken in back in the 90s. I had a prophet named Sawyer, came from Oklahoma in the 90s. And spoke a prophetic word over my life. And said, man of God, I see you in authority. I see God sending you up as a leader over a church. He said over the truck ministry. And guess what? That happened too. But then he said, I see God place you in a position as a leader over the church. I started ministry in 2005. Because I trusted God that there was a the timing and that what God wanted me to do. But that was seasonal. Because it didn't remain. Because it was not the prophetic word God wanted me to do. It was just like Abraham. When God told him he's going to be the father of many nations, his wife Sarah said, take my handmaid and marry her and, and, and have a baby by her. By Hagar. So Abraham got ahead of God trying to fulfill the prophetic word. Even though God still blessed him with the promised child, God still blessed me years later to be set up as an assistant pastor of a church. I mean, going on now for about seven years as assistant pastor. All 
all because I trusted in the word of God and his prophet. The word says, believe in the Lord your God and his prophet, so shall you be established. Believe in the, he said, receive a prophet, and name a prophet, you shall receive a prophet reward. I'm a living witness that I'm receiving a prophetic reward because I received the prophet in the name of a prophet. So I hope you apply that to your life today. Re remind yourself of that. Whatever God speaks into your life, he's able to perform it. I have observed this demonic power falsely prophesying over others for monetary gain and self-promotion. I heard a story today about a, a prophetic lady who is manipulating God's people. In order to get blessed, you got to get thousands of dollars and God going to bless you. And she chose a number of people to give a certain amount to her. And, and I tell you, when God begins to speak, his word will not return to him void. God is not going to lie to you. He's not going to manipulate you to, to give in order to be blessed because God to whom he blessed cannot be cursed. If God blesses you, it's according to his word and your obedience to believe the word. God is not going to deceive you and tell you you got to give a certain amount of money in order for you to be blessed. That's profit line. It's for selfish gain, for self-promotion, for monetary gain. If delivery sounds spiritual or flamboyant, punch to it, the church therefore needs to judge carefully all prophetic utterances. Your shepherd, the sheep, the body of Christ needs to be aware of false prophets. Many occasions, Paul came to the church in Corinthians, Ephesus, and Titus, and Timothy, and he warned them, beware of false prophets. For they would entice you with their words to lure you away from sound doctrine. Many times, the enemy comes along to corrupt and pervert the people of God. We have to recognize that spirit when it comes. Because any prophetic word with a spiritual utterance comes from the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, you got to listen and obey the voice of God and trust God that his word is not going to return to him void. But his word is going to manifest. It will come to prophetic to fulfill itself in your life in its proper timing and season by the Holy Spirit. Keep in mind that a person Motivated by Jezebel, does not easily submit to authority. Didn't I just read that a minute ago? How the false prophets rise up against authority? Because false prophets will incite rebellion in your church. And sometimes it'll start with the head of your church. Because your leader is not spending time in the presence of God and not consecrated and being prayed up. The enemy comes in a subtle way to bring witchcraft in the church, seducing spirits to lure the sheep astray and lead you into a trap of the enemy for your own demise. Jezebel her spirit does not want you to submit to authority, oversight, or correction, which is rebellion or rebellious response to the Lord's instructions. When you study God's word, the enemy comes along in a way to get you to go against authority, 
against the truth of God's word to incite you into a place where you not heed the Lord's instruction. We all know what God says. We all know his word. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 is a reference scripture. 1 John. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And those are some reference scriptures to this lesson tonight. Listen to our author. This is what, what they write in the book. It says, while pastoring a church in Texas, we experienced many witchcraft attacks from a Jezebel stronghold. Isn't that something? Strongholds. We talk about strongholds. When I went through the book, the strong man, what's his name, what's his game? The bait of Satan, the battlefield of the mind. We talked about strongholds. It's a fortress, a place of security or prison for you. And the devil wants to build a stronghold, a death structure in your mindset to prevent you from moving forward in God's plan for your life. So the pastor spends many attacks from a stronghold of Jezebel. Our church had a strong apostolic prophetic ministry with a mandate to fulfill Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 in training and equipping the saints especially in a prophetic ministry. Go to Ephesians chapter, chapter 4 verse 12. This is going to be good. This is good because this is the word of the Lord. Let me turn to it myself very quick. Give me a second. Because this is the scripture that talks about the offer, the officers that God put in the church. Okay. Let's see here. Let me go to the King James. Glory to God in the highest. I tell you. We have to really be careful how we allow ourselves to be manipulated by the enemy. We have to be prayed up. We have to keep on trusting God for his word to manifest in our lives. So Ephesians chapter 4, let me make this a little, a little bigger here. One second. Okay, it says, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, Verse 11. I'm going to read this. Give me a second here. Put this on the screen. So it says, He gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Isn't that amazing? How God put the offices in the church for the building of the church, the erecting of the church, to make the church effective against the kingdom of darkness, to make the church known in the community. Because he loved us so much, so that I cannot leave you defenseless. So I got to feed you with the word of God. And that's what he did for the perfecting of the body of Christ. He gave the ministry of all these offices to make us serve and love and build one another up. Every gift in the body of Christ is for building up one another. The word tells us, though there be many members, yet there's one body, right? So we got to be aware of the enemy's tactics that come against us as God's people. Because he knows if I can distract you and deter you from walking in your purpose, 
I can stop you from doing what God wants you to do to be effective against the kingdom of darkness. So we got to pay attention. Allow the Spirit of God to minister to your heart. Amen? Let's go on a little further. It says, in some, it says, in other words, let me go back a little further. It says, our church experienced a horrific, horrendous attack from what I refer to as a sniper maneuvers. We all know what snipers are, right? A sniper can shoot his rifle 500 yards and hit his target. The pastor says the attack was so horrendous. It was like a sniper that singled them out and had maneuvers on how to attack their church and be effective. If a sniper shoots you from a distance, you can guarantee he's going to hit his target. He's going to stop you in your tracks and knock you off your feet. The enemy does the same thing. He attacks you to slow you down, even to bring you to your knees to a crawl. For one thing I found out, that the enemy doesn't realize when he attacks a child of God and knocks us off our feet, he's bringing us down to the place of surrender, crying out for God's help. Where God can show up on the scene right where you are and build you up on your faith and trust him on the more and build you in strength and power to retaliate against your enemy with the word of God. In other words, Jezebel sent a SWAT team to sow seeds of false prophecy. Wow. We all know what SWAT is, right? When there's a drug dealer and a, a, a person who escaped the cops and ran around the country they send SWAT looking for him. And when the SWAT team gets news of your location where you are hiding, a group of armed soldiers in the, in the police force bands together to come where you are and surround your house and attack it. They have to break down your door. They do it with an intention of catching their enemy. We have to be careful, people. We got to pay attention because we have some criminals in the body of Christ. And the Lord is trying to make you aware, make you, make you discerning so you be aware of the SWAT team of Jezebel that sat and camped in the body of Christ in your church. And he uses the people as an assault against God's people to bring discouragement, to bring you to misery and rebellion, stubbornness, pridefulness, haughtiness, get you to a place where you just don't care no more. This resulted in many of us suffering Listen to this. Suffering from confusion, physical infirmities, and strange diseases, such as unusual skin conditions, with no medical explanation, and strange tumors that appeared and then disappeared. Isn't that something? how the spirit of witchcraft uses false prophecies to produce physical infirmities because it starts in the spirit. Once the enemy attack you in your spirit, then the enemy knows if I can attack you in the spirit to get you to doubt God's word, doubt who you are, 
doubt the calling and the purpose you've been created for God's glory, I can produce physical infirmities. Last week I mentioned about a woman who had someone prayed over her who was not under the spirit leadership. And the woman's foot went crooked. Other people testified that certain people prayed for them and an unusual sickness came upon them and the doctor had no explanation where it come from and how to cure it. We have to really be prayed up, people of God, and ask God to give you a strong spirit of discernment to see beyond the realm of the flesh into the spirit realm to see what the enemy is trying to attack you with, to know where the attack is coming from, where you can send it back to the pit of hell where it come from. We rebuke the devourer right now in the name of Jesus. Every attack, every assault, spiritual and physical illnesses that come against God's people will not affect them anymore from this day forward. Because we're covered by the blood of the Lamb. And we're children of the Most High God. And the devil cannot stop you from walking in the plan God has for your life. Stop giving in to the mind of defeat. Your failure, your defeat, it originates in your heart because it gets from your mind. Whatever the mind think about, whatever I dwell on, allow to get into my eye gate, my ear gate, it gets into the core of my life, my heart. And it affects me in a damaging way. You got people who are depressed, emotionally disturbed, mentally ill, all because they gave into seducing spirits. And they find themselves easily attacking other folk just because of a thought came into their mind that they assumed that the person was attacking them. And the person haven't done, never done anything or said anything about them. We have to be careful who you entertain. People carry unclean spirits. And the unclean spirit is searching for a house to dwell in. Jesus told a parable about a man who was full of demons. And the man would dwell among tombs, cutting himself with stone, throwing himself in the fire. Unclean spirit. And he said that this man saw him coming and assumed Jesus was coming to torment him. See how quick it is to get to assumption? Just because I see something that looks like a threat to me doesn't necessarily mean it's a threat. So because I see a person who looks at me a strange way does not mean they're coming to attack you. They might be thinking deeply on a thought that's pondering their mind and they have their, their, their face disfigured because they're pondering what's on their mind. Stop assuming. Stop allowing the enemy to use you <coughs> to attack other people through the spirit of assumption. I remember another story he told about a woman who swept out a house had demons in the house. And when she swept the demons out, so the demons went looking for another house to dwell. And when the demons found no other place to go, it got seven more spirits. Unclean spirits, evil spirits, tormenting spirits. And said, let me go back to my house where I once came from. The enemy is not playing with you. He's not playing with me. We got to pay attention who I'm entertaining, what I'm entertaining, and who I'm listening to, and what I'm looking at. Because anything he wants to do in your life to destroy you, that he's going to do. So you got to be prayed up, be on guard, 
The word tells us to be vigilant, be sober, for your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour every day. He don't take a break. He's not taking a break from that. We take a break from serving God, but the devil never takes a break. He's on guard 24-7, looking for someone to devour. Will it be you? Will it be me? It's our choice and decision to make. Am I going to entertain the voice of the enemy? I'm going to look at stuff I shouldn't look at. I'm going to hear things I shouldn't hear. I'm going to speak things I shouldn't speak. It's up to you. It's up to me to guard our hearts. For out of it flows the issues of life. Amen. We're almost done. We're almost done. I'm going to quit here at the end of this last paragraph that we'll pick up next week. In other words, Jezebel sent a SWAT team to sow seeds of false prophecy. This resulted in many suffering and from, from confusion, confusion physical infirmities and strange diseases such as unusual skin conditions with no medical explanation. And strange tumors that appeared and disappeared. That had to have been a sight to see. Tumors appearing and disappearing. So we have to really guard our minds, guard our hearts. So when you pray, ask the Lord to guard your mind and guard your heart. And put a bit in your mouth, and a bridle on your tongue, and a bit in your mouth. That you can allow the Holy Spirit to discipline you from speaking things about people and to people you should not be speaking. Stop being an agent of the SWAT team of Jezebel. Sowing discords. Being corrupted by the enemy. Stop allowing the enemy to seduce you with negativity. And allow the Spirit of God to cover your mind and your heart with the Word of God. When you speak the Word of God, the Word of God sets a defense fortress around you. I remember in Star Trek when Captain Kirk, when the Romulans were coming against him in their ship, he would tell his, his driver of the ship, number one, he said, tell them to put up shields. He would put up the shields over the ship so when the enemy would attack, it couldn't penetrate the shield. We need to let the Holy Spirit put a shield over our lives, become Lord of our lives, where we're not easily penetrated by the enemy to do anything damaging to ourselves. But we continue to lift up the name of the Lord in everything we do. We practice righteousness and living right before God and before his people and behind closed doors. Because God is watching you. He's watching me. And he convicts all of our hearts when we sin it. When we're out of order with God, God convicts you. But we don't listen. And I charge you tonight to let your ears be open, your heart be receptive <clears throat> to receive the discipline, <clears throat> excuse me, from the Holy Spirit to build you up in your faith, to trust the Lord in His Word, to manifest in your life to cleanse you and perfect you to make you better. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So uh, next week we're going to pick up talking about Jezebel operates with a Python spirit. Jezebel operates with a Python spirit. And you, we, you'll find out what that is. I already know what it is. But you know what a python is, right? It's a very large snake. And it squeezes the life out of you. 
if God wants us to be aware and be on guard and be discerning of everything the enemy plots and plans for your demise and pray against it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you tonight for your word. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask, Lord God, that you forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come into our heart and be our Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving us, God. Cleanse us, God. Perfect us and change us for the better. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone got any questions or comments tonight? Amen. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want everyone to pray this simple prayer with me tonight, as we do each week. You might be on here, might be a backslider, one who once walked with the Lord and you fell off somewhere down the road. God is married to the backslider. He loves you, he cares for you. He wants to restore you and revive you. But then you might be one who is a born-again believer and just need to be rededicated to the Lord. I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowingly, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If there be any sin in my heart, I ask, Lord, that you take it out and make me righteous, that you will be glorified in my life. Now be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I thank you again for tuning in tonight. So those Facebook stars, it's been a blessing to you. Those stars add up to money for the ministry. If anyone want to uh, have a, a conversation concerning the lesson tonight. Feel like you need to call and speak with me about something. It's okay. I send my number to you as usual. 414-299-6463. If you have any questions or comments concerning the lesson tonight, feel free to give me a call. Or even, even a subject you might want to discuss in our lessons feel free to give me a call. Or you might inbox me on Facebook. And I'll respond to you accordingly as the timing permits. Amen. But before we go, I want to also let you know about my pastor's daughter, my, my spiritual daughter, has created some bottles, some glasses. She's got, some, she's got cups, she got bottles, stuff she's doing. And she's special, you know, uh, specializing these cups with different type of de decals and different wording and this one says blessing and <clears throat> she sells those for fifteen dollars so you can look up hope Fenroy on facebook and you'll see it on her page and she's selling them on etsy so you can go to etsy.com you can find all her stuff she's selling it she's selling t-shirts she's selling sweatshirts she's selling shirts you know different things so be supportive to her her ministry, and I guarantee you will continue to be blessed as you sow into her life and to the life of others. Amen. So I thank you again for tuning in tonight, and I encourage you, walk by faith and not by sight. You are more than a conqueror and not to be conquered. God has made you a conqueror and not to be conquered. God does not give you a spirit of fear, but love upon a sound mind. You might want to use that. A friendly handshake, a kind word, a hug with somebody who you meet in your journey who might just need to know God loves them. Let God use you. And as I always encourage each one of us to put on the full armor of God to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because he's coming. He's going to continue to come against you. So you got to guard yourself with the full armor of God. The word says, let the word of God be a lamp to your feet 
and align into your pathway. And God will expose the enemy in the darkness when he tries to come against you. Because he loves darkness. If he can lure you to darkness, to walking in darkness, being rebellious, being stubborn, being prideful, being haughty, he can entrap you in the darkness. But Jesus Christ shines his light in the midst of the darkness so you can walk in the light of truth and not stumble in the darkness. So I encourage you with these words tonight. And I pray you continue to be blessed. Stay excited about Jesus. Know that God loves you, and so do I. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. Shalom. May peace and wellness and health be unto you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a good night.